Dimp Digital presents Idle Game Chat. Cool. Hello, Apps here from Dimp Digital. Welcome to Idle Game Chat bonus stage. This is our occasional bonus show where we produce our infamous spoiler cast, fantasy gaming league updates, and the legendary Dimp Digital gaming quiz. But this time, we'll be running through our game of the year for 2021. As tradition dictates, I am joined by the one time Dimp Digital Gaming Quiz Champion, and the two-time Fantasy Gaming League MVP. It's that man. It's Hall. How's it going? Hello. Yeah, it's good. Really milking that MVP title as well. I'll take that every day. Yep, that'll be there to the end of time. And they're yep. back-to-back as well. So That's it, mate. Back-to-back. Yeah, we're going for a three-peat, which won't happen. Well... We'll see. There's, <sighs> there's, there's a lot of big scores rolling in already. Adkins is basically... Yeah, he may well have wrapped a problem it up. on it. Yeah, it's cost us all. With that Elden Ring floating in with silly scores. But um, yeah. we'll see. You should Hopefully you'll be back in the quiz this year to try and reclaim that title. Didn't get an opportunity yeah. to defend... Well, had the opportunity and rejected it. Well, I've had it down. Having <laughs> listened back to the quiz and the absolute... A, the diabolicalness of everyone. Like I, I think it's the easiest quiz that you've done for a while and the scores were lower than normal the and lowest then, winning score ever and then as for the fucking deba- debacle at the end i mean i mean it really calls into question the legitimacy of everything that he's ever done yeah akins as we know is not is shit the bed there and i think you know i've, I've well public- and truly I've, I've publicly criticized logan as well for the way he handled that like worse than massey <laughs> floundering all over the place, sort of letting him off the hook. You could see right through that fucking cheat there, and he just took the bait and went to figure it out. Oh, it's a nightmare. So we will try and tying it up for this year. There's there's def- different opportunities being explored. Where hopefully we can uh, we can prevent that from happening. But you know, it might just be like the Tour de France, where you just have to just say, look, some there's, pe- there's yeah. people out there cheating, and, that, and that's the end of Get it. Gonna happen. Yeah, you can't stop it. But we're here to talk about our game of the year for 2021. Try and line it up with the Dice Awards, which took place last night. And uh, so we're here to talk about the first full year, really, of of current gen, aka next gen, because they released in November of 2020. So we've got a, a full year, a full calendar year of those consoles. But we're going to run through our sort of nominees. We've got six here and then we will choose a winner at the end and we'll probably do some, we'll break away once we've gone through the nominees, do some personal picks and other bollocks like that. Before we get into the games themselves, what do you think of last year as a whole? Because there's been a lot of criticism from many voices in the world of the internet. Um, And, you know, as, as a first year for a new console cycle, I feel like we had this in 2014 as well. It was a bit of a struggle to to get through it. And already, you know, Q1 of this year, we've already had three really good games <laughs> that have come yeah. out or, or or out as we as we're recording this. So it's already looking like it's going to be a better year, but in terms of 2021, where did you land on it? Yeah, I mean it was a tough one again because as you say, it's kind of the first full year of the next gen stuff. Um, Mm. and developers are inevitably still finding their footing on the consoles like uh, we always say this we'd like you say we said it in 2014 the first few games that come out more tend to feel more like uh, graphical demos than they do anything else I also think that this the the release of the Series X and the PS5 has been because of the shortage of the actual consoles themselves uh, everything is still coming out as PS4 PS5 Xbox One, Xbox Series X, which is my personal pet peeve because mm. I I feel like if you're making something that's run that, that can run on the PS4 or can run on the Xbox One, then it's not utilising the full capability of the the two new next gen consoles. Mm-hmm. You know, I know we say we get the PS5 version or whatever, but it's it's just not. Make me a game that's for the hardware that I have. Make me a game that shows off that showcases the absolute maximum potential of these. 
And we always end up with a year, a transition year. Yeah. Like I say, I think it might end up being longer than that because yeah. they are in such short supply, and you know they've got a, they've got to cater to what people are still playing on. Um, but yeah, in terms of, it, it was also still a COVID year. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. There's no getting away from it. it Arguably still... affected worse because during the yeah. time COVID first hit, there'd have been a lot of games that perhaps were due for 2021 releases and got pushed out because of the, the, the months that were lost trying to scramble and figure out remote working. Whereas a lot of the 2020 stuff felt like it was mostly done by the time yeah, it was time to it come was out. Yeah, the end, end of cycle. And yeah. this was stuff that was, that was kind of mid-cycle when COVID started and then it took a real hit through all of last year and you and like you say i think maybe we're seeing that in in q1 this year and hopefully going into q2 q3 that we're going to get all the big name or all the big releases that we were hoping for that will have just been finished off and you know like you say places are getting back to a bit of normality and we can we can start to enjoy video gaming because i think it's fair to say on the whole 2021 was a pretty weak year mm. yeah i i mean there's a lot to play like the the normally is most years but it's all shit. Well, there was no, in my view, there was no real top tier contenders. Mm. Like yeah. beyond beyond like the yearly releases, mm. like the, the Call of Duties and the and the whatever, the Fifas and the NBAs and the Maddens and stuff, which are you know bankers for every year. Like you say, there wasn't. It didn't really feel like there was any big AAA, like the next the next big thing from a studio or something. I know we had a couple, but they weren't really. Yeah, I mean, it fe- yeah, it felt flat. Yeah, the way I kind of describe it is there was a lot of good, not great games, Fair. and actually made this year really hard just choosing because everything seemed like it felt like it was in the same bracket, the same good, not great bracket. Whereas yeah. usually you have two, three that are the tier above. And you're like, okay, we can hang our hats on those three and then figure out, you know, the rest of the field. But this was like, no, they're all they're all in one pot, um, which yeah. made made narrowing down these six more difficult than it usually is. Um, yeah, and I, I think also it's normally when... So the the however many of us get together to discuss this and talk about games, etc. Hmm. Obviously, I think almost all of us have got all, all, all the consoles yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but normally when we do these at least a couple of us have played all the games and the rest of us have played most of them. Yeah. But, and again, as we've said this in previous um, podcasts, my time is so precious now that I don't, I won't play a game that's good. Well, I've seen you playing Destiny again, so that's that's not true, uh, is it? um, But I only want to, I only want to spend my time playing what I would consider to be great games. Yeah. And it makes, it makes it hard for years like this that, like you say, there was a lot that came out and a lot that was on, say, for example, Xbox Game Pass, yep. you know, there's no real reason not to play it other than time. Yeah. And I mean, I, I didn't get around to playing a lot of these because it was just, I was, I, I was kind of like, oh, maybe I will. But in reality, I had other stuff, other stuff that I'd rather play. Um, but it was just, it, there wasn't many. There was only two or three games really that really took me this year. Yeah. I mean, I actually, last year, because it was so sort of, I guess, lacking in, in huge, big, top tier games i actually did a good job of getting through backlog games like yeah game, clearing game, out games like monster hunter world um i put 90 hours into that at the start of the year wouldn't wouldn't, dr- wouldn't dream of playing a 20 bloody 18 game this year and, and pumping 80 90 hours into it um, yeah and then I did actually get to play most of like the stuff that's been in the conversation actually all of the stuff that was in conversation for game of the year I think you're the only one that's played them all. Am I right in saying? Yeah, I think of so. All of yeah, us? yeah that, that's that's correct. Which is unusual, like you said, but it was a bit more of a scattergun approach because people just sort of left off going, "Oh, I'll, I'll play this game." It's like, well, what's yeah, that? Psychonauts two. People are knocking that out. Then you've got it was just a bit all over the place. There was, like you said, nothing stood out. So you had like a big group of games to pick from, um, mm. and and people were were evidently playing other things. And uh, that was that. But let's get into the nominees that we've finally the decided list. on. Took longer than I... Probably my fault for not doing the process. But it doesn't help when the people involved in the process can't understand English. Brain dead, isn't they? When you're just asking for, yes, just just take a punt on any of these if you want them into the next round. And people say, I don't want that one. It's like, that's not what we're asking yet. 
Yeah, just we're not just asking you to yours, rule yeah. anything out. We just want to know <laughs> if anyone likes this game. Well, enough. I, I haven't played that. Or don't well, answer. It doesn't matter. Does exactly, it? Yeah, exactly. Just say that. Just. So that's oh, the, the level of horrific. intellect we're dealing with. And then half of them sat there silently, and I was like, I don't know what even you're, you're doing on the panel at this stage. Like, <laughs> if you're going to just sit there. Shit. Like I said, I'm, I trust the people here to be able to put right. forward a relatively eloquent argument for a game that I won't have played, but I have to, tr- I have to apply a certain amount of trust to other people. Yes. That if yeah. you tell me that this game is worthy of being on this list, then it's worthy of being on this list. And everyone's just fucking uh, uh, nothing. No, no. Oh, well, I'd like it because of this. No, nothing. It's literally just like, oh, I haven't played that, so it can't go on. Right. <laughs> yeah. We'll have two Wake ga- up. We'll have two games if that was the case. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, Clown dear. dogs. Painful. Absolutely Any- painful. Anyway, we go in chronological order. So the game that was released first in the year. And we're going to kick things off with It Takes Two. Hayes, yeah. Hayes Light Studios development, published by EA. I mean, this is one of the few studios they've got that kind of do things outside of the EA box. Yeah. Um, and it takes two. I, I played it through with Adcock, actually, and really good game. Like, Yes, so I was going to ask you, Did you, I assumed that you'd played it co-op. Yes. Yeah, so Adcock... On, on, online co-op, I assume. Yeah, all online co-op. Um, you can do it split screen, but obviously COVID was still... Right, yeah, right, and, and, and couldn't. Well, Boris said to you stay at home. Don't be going out. Want him around anyway? Yeah. No, so. I don't want to go to his either. It's not. Yeah, it's too many children. Aren't there? Exactly. So we played together. He he bought it, and um, as part of the, the the way the game was set up, um, I could play it for free by downloading like the the friend pass. So oh. I didn't get any didn't achievements though. So I know well. that. Well, yeah. So I, I, no. I'm not up for that. You would have just That'd bought have been, it, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd have been like, well, I'll be the one that's buying it then. Yeah, yeah, that is... I, I like that idea, though, because yeah. whilst achievements matter to me, I know they don't to most people. So, mm. I mean, that's that's cool, because it encourages people to play it in cooperative mode. Yeah. Like, it's... It, there's... So many... Like, this was obviously a game that was designed to be played together. You, you can only people. play it cooperatively. There's no, oh, there is well. no single player option. So, I guess Christ, when, when it's you a real problem for people with no friends, isn't it? Well, Jesus, uh, yeah, it is. And, and it, you know, and also, it's not just that. One of the things that can spoil a co-optive experience is the blabbering. You know, unfortunately, the Adcock was pretty well behaved mostly, but I've been in those Destiny, you know, trying to run through the campaign. It's just. Rah! And you can't yeah, hear nothing, and you're like, right, well, through every cutscene yeah. and squabbling over one another, and one person wants to skip stuff, and the yeah, other one wants it. to watch it, and yeah, ugh, yeah, know, absolutely hideous. No, but um, Mr. Ferris, old fuck the Osters, Joseph Ferris, he's he's done a great job with this because uh, in terms of a, a cooperative game, there's not been, I mean, it's co-op only, so that's it has to be strong, but it really is something quite special. Really plays so well. And uses so many different platforming mechanics and different unique um, situations, scenario and scenarios that all play up to a really high standard. So usually, when you get these games where you get like you can basically get like a new power per level, um, and you'll have a different power to your partner, but they'll complement each other. So one of the early yeah. ones is one of you um, is is the hammer, and one of you is the nail, and you can you can throw the na- you can hammer the nail into the into the wall, and then the other person can hook onto the nail and use it to to sort of travel and get across the land. So you, it's you, you simply can't play it on your own, you, even if you wanted to. It requires two people, yeah. um, and all these different kind of unique levels and, and mechanics come together so well, like. So well, like yeah. you'd be surprised that how many ideas they managed to cram into here and deliver and execute to a high standard. Usually, when you see things like this, like it starts to come away at the seams. They because overdo it. Yeah. They're trying to do too much. Yeah, but absolutely not here. And you know what? It's not easy either. Like I know people have been. They're like, oh, I'll, I'll play that of my other half. I'm like, honestly, if they've got not, no, not one of those. If they've yeah. not got like a base understanding of how games work, they're going to struggle because right. I mean, me and Adcock aren't the best, but. There was, a, there was a few bosses where it kicked our ass. We had to really coordinate and Knuckle time down. things. Yeah, it was like, it's not yeah. a... It gives off this kind of like childlike appearance and, and style, but it certainly, under the hood, requires a, a, a decent level of, of gaming and whatnot. So 
if you compare this to sort of Hayes Light's last outing, which was a way out, and that was another co op game, yeah. like the prison yes. break style. Yeah. Um, and this absolutely takes a big old crap over it. It's I, <laughs> it's almost unrecognizable in terms of like, I, you can't really believe the same studio has come along of just a few years later and delivered something like this. Yeah, I mean, A Way Out wasn't terrible from what I understood either. Like, I think you played through that with Logan, didn't you? Mm. And it was, Correct. I don't think it was like terrible, but this has been, this has been another level. I mean, it's been so critically acclaimed. Yeah. Uh, obviously one game of the year at the Game Awards, which is, I mean, well, I should tell you everything you need to, I mean, might not win the Dimp Award because, which is obviously <laughs> what they, they're really all looking for. But yes. yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. So I, I didn't know that it was, purely a cooperative endeavor as well yeah. Which yeah i like i like that they're making sure that you've got someone to play it with as well by giving it to the second person for free yeah it's it's that's definitely a, and they did that of a way out as well which was a um uh, a good move and it's it's risky as well because you mean that must half the sales almost the potential sales because yeah i would have probably yeah, it was... bought it had adcock said look i really want to play this and i was like, I'd have been like all right it's 25 quid or whatever it was and i would have bought it but i didn't have to unless I wanted those wanted damn those achievements, Evos. yeah, and yeah, it's, it, the story itself's okay. I mean, that's probably the, one of the weaker parts of it, but it's it's perfectly serviceable. You know, sort of a struggling couple who are yeah, about to split up, and then through the I don't know the world of like magic, they are turned basically into their kids' dolls, and mm. they need to to work together to you know beat all these obstacles and whatnot. And it's, you know, will will they get back together? Will they not? You know, people can play through and find out the uh, the conclusion of that. But um, there's also a large Help number of tester. yeah, exactly. But there's a load of mini games in there as well, like tons of like competition based mini games. Like one of them, I mentioned the hammer and the nail in the early levels. It's actually like a whack a mo box where one of you's the the you know the the whacker and the other one's the little rat trying to get up on the. <laughs> in, in the holes and they they keep a score and whatnot and there's achievements associated with that there's a full game yeah. of chess in there so if you want to play a game of chess that's in there in the game as well and there's tons of just little ideas they put in there really imaginative really fun to play and you know as, as a co-op game i don't think i've played much better that's designed as a, as a platform to be played just by by the two people so definitely a thumbs up for me and all those that have played it, again, it's it's a struggle because if you haven't got someone to play with, you can he play it, but that's the, it, it, it wouldn't work any other way. It simply wouldn't it wouldn't be it wouldn't work. It is what it way. is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, no, it is what it is. So there, it, it takes to March twenty sixth. Now on Game Pass for those that, yeah. that have that. So I imagine it's had a second win since it went on there via the uh, the EA Access kind of agreement they've got in there. So, I wonder if one person has Game Pass and the other person doesn't. If you can still do it co-op, that's, that's a good point. That's that's worthwhile people investigating. I mean, if you haven't got Someone Game Pass at this that. point, though, yeah, wake up! It's Come the on. fucking best value thing you're getting in gaming. Come Be on. serious. Come on. Come on now. Pull your fingers out. You've got to get more of them fridges. <laughs> I need well, your money. Need your money for fucking fridges. I that know. fucking eyesore. Look. Yep. I still haven't done the review on that. And it's, I've turned it off. Yeah. Because it's the um, review loud and shit. It is too noisy. I'll go, for, I will do full thoughts and post it on the <laughs> channel one day. But yeah, I'm, it's it's one of those things I was enamored with to start with. And then after well, a few it's, weeks, it's I was a like, novelty, right. on it? Yeah. Yeah. What do the buttons do on it? Just turn the lights on and off. <laughs> Don't, there's no noise or anything. Pathetic. So that that may have been a highlight of 2021 was the Xbox fridge, but we yeah, didn't get ours till well. 2022 because of the bloody delays in shipping in the UK. Yeah, yeah. so got sti- excellent, got stitched up there. Excellent, Resident <laughs> Evil Village. Cool, the scary game. It's not actually that scary. No, I, I mean, I know Seven is way not- scary. Seven is terrifying. Yeah, yeah. Seven is. I, I haven't. I haven't played. Oh no, that's not true. I played five and six. Not very much, but yeah. I was going to say I haven't played one since four. Four was the last one that I played properly. Yeah. Properly. Yeah. And and this, you know, a lot of people. One of the one of the main criticisms of Village is that it's not Resident Evil Four. I'm like, it's not. They're still living <laughs> up to the hype. They're still <laughs> living up to the hype of Resi Four, aren't they? And yeah. they re- Obviously, with the Resident Evil remasters of two and three mm. that have come Them quite recently in quick succession, and that have both done pretty well, it's fair to say. Yeah, yeah this ha- this was kind of 
I think people were expecting big things of Village, and to be fair, I mean, by the sounds of things, they they delivered to a certain degree. Oh yeah, certainly no disgrace. Like Resident Evil is still on form. Um, the the first person, I guess, comeback of the series continues, and this is a this is another solid entry. And to be fair, it is running at a, a massive disadvantage to Seven because Seven had the advantage of okay, we've never seen Resident Evil from a first-person perspective. Yeah. So it's a brand new way to experience a, a franchise. Um, all new, you know, perspectives and whatnot. Village is coming in. We've kind of had that. Everyone's been surprised by it. So it's like, okay, what, what more have you got? And it is no disgrace. Like, really, really solid. Um, not as scary as Seven, as I mentioned, but I think it works in its favour sometimes because as much as I love Seven for its scariness, do you think I'll ever want to play that game again? Yeah, no. that's it. I don't want to that's torture it. myself again. Um, I also find that a lot of a lot of games that try and be scary, I think there's different ways of doing um, of of making like the horror genre stuff. There yeah. is stuff that just has like that ominous fear and dread of you, yeah. and then there's stuff that just does deliberate jump scares <laughs> for the sake of it. And I fucking hate like deliberate jump scares. Yeah. Just just trying to get provoke a reaction. It works. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes, yeah, of course, you jump out your fucking chair. But <laughs> does this fit more into, or, I mean, is this more jump scares or is this more like, like I say, that kind of overall ominous it's, yeah, build up? It's more atmosphere and... Just atmosphere and grittiness and yeah. just kind of... And you've got yeah. Lady Dimitrescu in, like, in, yeah. in the castle section, like, hunting you down. It's That's taking definite pointers from uh, Mr. X in, in the remake or two. So you've got that sort of air in there. But... What the game does well is make you not want to just completely shy away. Like it gives you enough weapons, and there's a merchant in the game which they've introduced, so you can get ammo. And whatnot. You to... Yeah, it's far more action focused than what Seven was, absolutely, and that gives it a really nice, a really nice flow. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, because previous, again, like you say, previous entries, it's been they've been a little bit more based around not not the stealth. Stealth's kind of the wrong word for it, but like you say, the encur- like the doesn't necessarily encourage you to engage with everything no, you say. You act, I, in seven, you actively avoid it because you think, I don't wanna, A, I don't want to lose any health because I've got limited resources. Yeah. B, if I do need to engage, I don't want to waste my bullets. So yeah. You, you, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Resource was always a big thing. Yeah. yeah. And this is like, no, you. we will give you tools to handle this however you decide to. No, you can, you know. You can wander around and try and avoid the werewolves or the lichens, whatever you want to call them. They're cool enemies. They're, yeah. um, they're, they're a big change up and whatnot. But um, equally, we will give you weapons. You'll get more and more powerful as you, as you go on. And uh, if you want to just start taking the fight to these, these fucking overgrown dogs, you can. <laughs> and uh, that's highly encouraged as well. And um, one of the things that it, I, I feel like it doesn't get enough credit for is just how beautiful the game is. This It looks great. This village. I actually played it on the PC when I got my PC. All right, okay. and that was the first game I got on it. Now I did have the stuttering issue that was there because that fucking DRM that Capcom put in there. So that yeah. was a, that was infuriating. Annoying. But when that wasn't happening, the game was was absolutely beautiful. I've seen it on the on the consoles as well. Looks and runs brilliantly. And the whole the the, the you know the main event of Village is the village setting. Yeah, like this this. Beautiful yeah, Victorian. it's your environment that you're in, and yeah, yeah, Eastern European village pulled like Victorian era. It's beautiful place, and it acts as like a little hub that you kind of keep returning to with new items to go down new paths and explore. And again, because you're not so frightened to lose a bit of health or waste bullets, exploration becomes a second nature, and there's tons of rewards to get as you go yeah. off and do that. Um, it's it's a it's, it's a good game for sure, and th- those that have enjoyed seven, um, and and perhaps wanted a bit more of an action focused game, they've, they've delivered that here with Village, and uh, people should uh, shouldn't sleep on it. If you've enjoyed Resident Evil as a series, haven't haven't partaken in seven or Village, get on both of those because this series is a uh, is back after the disgrace of six. They've yeah. they've turned that ship around and are heading in the in the right direction. Super interested to see what they do with the next one, whether they stick with. A, f- a first person um the rumors are we're going to get a remake of four at some point as well so the remake yeah. trend continuing but village it stands out as a, as a nice little entry Could yeah s- fair play well done capcom 
better than their Street Fighter fucking six. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. evidently they stole the logo off of uh, an Adobe <laughs> sixty pound pack. Fucking awful business. Yeah, they just can't quite be consistent. Capcom, that's my main criticism. They're always up and down. Yeah, I mean, you look. Yeah, the the, the franchises they've got, they've got some big big stuff in there. But like you say, they're just so hit and miss. And it's a shame because a lot of the franchises are well well loved. Yeah. So yeah, fingers crossed for the next one, like you say, be it a Resi Four remake or Resi Nine, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Well, I wonder yeah. whether it'd be called Resi Nine because they went with Village here rather than Village Seven. Now they had the little eyes were in the in the they they done like the I and the L as the three yeah. sort of you know. The... A lot of people still referred to it as as Resi Eight, didn't they? So yeah. yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. June the 11th, so just rounding out <coughs> H2, we've got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So this is the only game on here that is that is considered next-gen only because everything else is cross-platform uh, or on Switch, which, let's be honest, ain't next-gen. <laughs> so, Doesn't count. <laughs> 720p glory. Yeah, so... But this was, this was the big showcase, the big showpiece from Insomniac. Big first-party exclusive for Sony and it's going on to, to PS5 only. Um I mean it's a it's a real looker. It's like playing a real life Pixar game. That's absolutely absolutely needs to be called out. But the the big thing everyone was talking about is the is the technical showcase of this instant interdimensional switching using this these newfound SSDs saying that this is what we can do in terms of switching up your gameplay. And to be honest, when you see it in full motion, it is a sight to behold. Um, and it's not just a one-trick pony, because it's coupled with some really solid gameplay, great weapons, decent story, and um, and just a, a nice overall family-friendly package, which we don't see a lot of. You, you can't be playing Resident Evil Village in front of the Little Ones. You don't want to be seeing that poor bloke get his throat ripped out in the opening in front of the youngsters. Whereas Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, bang it on. And uh, you can pick this up, and I feel like a lot of people will have fun with this if they when they jump on and give it a go. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those ones. So I I had this bundled with my PS5. I felt like it was one of those ones that was just like a it was, it, it was almost being marketed as a bundle game, mm. you know, which I think is probably unfair to be honest. Um, Insomniac have obviously got a great record of yeah. bits and pieces. The Spider Man games being the the kind of the highlight of recent times and. I, I think it's fair to say that they've... I mean, it's not quite on the level that perhaps the Spider-Mans are. You're obviously a bigger fan of those than I am. But mm. um, certainly from what we've seen in this, it looked... I, I like... Leading back to the point that we made earlier on in the podcast, I like that it was a PS5 exclusive. Yeah. Show me what the PS5 can do. And that's what this was. And that's what it, it delivers. And like you say, I mean, it looks terrific. Absolutely. Considering people say, oh, it's not... like Because it's not... a god of war or horizon mm. or whatever it's not a it's not a, a realism style game but the art style in it i thought was brilliant and it looked terrific it looked amazing yeah. really really good yeah it's it is it's, it's still one of the best looking games out there and um i think you, i agree with you in terms of that it probably does it's probably the shine has worn off because of people look for photo realism and you know that's that's kind of how people judge it, but this in its own right is is fantastic. And you know, as, as someone who's only ever played Ratchet and Clank twenty sixteen, so I hadn't played the previous ones, the originals. Yeah, um, this was a this is a good jumping on point for people that that perhaps aren't familiar with the story. I did catch up on it, you know, using YouTube and whatnot, so I knew what I thought I needed to know. But great great showcase of what the PS five can can do for sure, and. Fun to play, nice and stress free. You know? Yeah, nice to have a game like that occasionally. It's just a bit more pick up and play that you're not settling in for a, you know, a real beat down like you might do with with say for example Resi, Resi Evil. You know, mm. where you've really got to commit to it. This yeah. was, this has much more of that feel of being able to, like this the PS5 pick up and play style game. And like I say, I know a lot of people that have had it and a lot of people that have played it, and they've all no one seems to have. No one's raving about it being the greatest game no. that the PS5 ever is going to release, but not many people have have really crapped on it. No, no, because no, it's so it's so solid that you'd, you'd be a fool to be taking a crap on it. 
So yeah, and it's easy to get these these like um, platform style games wrong. Yeah, like I it was it was obviously a real thing back in the days of the N sixty four and the PS two, you know, with Spyro and Banjo Kazooie and all the Nintendo stuff that was out. And then I feel like a lot of stuff has tried to kind of rekindle that, like with ukulele and things like yeah. that. They just haven't ever quite got it quite got it right. And I felt like this was the first first thing that's really sort of a closing closing back to getting that nostalgia feeling for a decent a decent three D platformer. Yeah. Um outside of outside of Switch titles. So fair play. It was um yeah, I I I will get round to playing it at some point i'm sure of it purely because i've got it so i might as well <laughs> yeah it's, it's definitely but, worth playing uh, doesn't that say it's welcome not a big bloaty game that you can do it in under 15 decent, hours so. yeah not not stupidly long yeah, yeah. It's, that's that's always appreciated and actually a lot of the games we've had on here if you look it's it takes two that's that's pretty short resident evil village that's pretty short in comparison well i say they're short they're just not 30 hours i guess is the way i should be describing them um, yeah, it's it's been a year of actually nicer games that are a bit more digestible. Maybe that's why I played more than ever because I was playing shorter games rather than, you know, I'm playing right. Horizon Forbidden West at the moment, and that's yeah. that's that's. I'm thirty hours in, and I've barely barely scratched the surface. That's not even yeah. that's close. That's not even yeah. that's not even a you know over exaggeration of yeah. what's happening. So these 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 slightly shorter or medium length games do. Do find a nice sweet spot sometimes. Yeah, they do resonate with people. They don't outstay the welcome. October 8th. Nintendo had to get on the list somehow. You know, in what they've. I've, I feel they've had a bit of a, a struggle in the last 18 months, two years, for the stuff I'm, I enjoy anyway. Um, but they came out swinging with Metroid Dread. So I had played. I made a point of playing Super Metroid just before playing Dread, like a couple of weeks before, went on the old SNES fucking emulator that's on the Nintendo Switch Online, played through that, um, caught up on the, the other entries as well. I mean, I, ha- I had a quick go at the original Metroid, and my goodness. Yeah, that game's punishing. <laughs> that game is impossible yeah. and, and yeah. punishing at the same time. <laughs> that that remake was, was sorely needed, but made sure I got through Super Metroid, really enjoyed that. So I was all geared up for Metroid Dread. I was like, right, this is this is a, a franchise that doesn't get overexposed. You know, they they this is not something that comes out every three, four, five years. We seem to get one per generation, yeah. <laughs> give, give or take. Yeah. And I thought this was a great game. Um, it's different to Super Metroid. You know, it's a bit mm-hmm. more. People had criticisms of this because it wasn't as open as what people liked. But I'll tell you what, it doesn't half cut out some of the frustration and just let the game um, play itself. And for you just to not have to be frustrated about running around in circles, it won't. It doesn't tell you where to go. You still got to use your head now and again. But you won't find that you spent an hour in a completely wrong section of the game because it's sim- looking for. Yeah, because it simply won't allow you. It's very clever the way it kind of blocks off paths and how things happen as you go through so that it's like, okay, here's an area for you to explore. You don't need to be crossed back in all the way to the beginning of the map to worry about that. It's it's somewhere in this area here. And I really appreciated that because um, it was a bit more of a streamlined approach. How did you find it? Yeah, much the same, really. I really enjoyed it. I I mean, I have played as... I've played all the Metroid games. I also played all the Metroid Prime games. Um, and yeah, this is a welcome a welcome return to kind of the Metroidvania style um, 2D um, platforming style. And yeah, I loved it. I've so <clears throat> I played it on the OLED in handheld mode. Ah. So I'm assuming you played docked. Docked mostly. mostly. I played a little bit of handheld on OG Switch to. So I did play about four hours of it, just like that, but mostly docked. I played exclusively in handheld, yeah. and it was great, yeah. really good. Like, exactly what I want the Switch to be. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like you say, it's the great thing about it. There, there's enough exploration that I could go off and do odd bits and pieces to get my rocket tanks and my energy tanks yeah. and whatever else. But like you say, it wouldn't let you go completely off at a tangent and find yourself completely lost in an area that you can't do anything in. Mm. 
So it always kept, and there was times when I doubled back on myself and I went quite a long way because there are a few secret areas yeah. or like breakable walls and stuff that you're not, you just, until you start to get a feel for how the game works and what to look out for, you're not necessarily going to catch them. But um, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I thought the, 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 the length of the game, so it took me um, about 12 and a half hours to 100% it. Um, on normal mode. Cool, hundred percent jobby. Yeah, got to go. I mean, it took me about ten hours to do it, and I had it to about seventy-five percent. I think when I can, when I initially yeah. beat the final boss, and then I went back and did the remaining twenty-five percent of of collectibles, um, and then completed it again. Tell you what, it's a lot easier if you've got all your energy tanks and all your uh, all your rockets and stuff. Yeah, like, I just absolutely pissed the final boss first try, <laughs> second time round. Um, but yeah, and uh, the other thing with it was, it was, it was suitably difficult without being over the top, soul crushingly hard. I found, yeah. um, there was fights that I did. It took me a, several attempts, Yes, but, yeah. noth- but nothing that I literally felt like snapping the, snapping the console in half kind of thing, no. which for me is a very difficult balance to get. And I, I, yeah, I mean, fair play to Nintendo. I think it was. I think it's been one of the strongest Switch releases that we've had. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. No, like, I, I, like, I really enjoyed it. I just feel like it. What struck me was just how slick and fluid and tight the controls were, because mm-hmm. the game requires you to be be quite dexterous on the controller. Sometimes, you know, you've got a lot of different tools at your disposal, and you kind of need to use a lot of them close in, in proximity to one another and string things together. That you know that 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 controller scheme that, that that gameplay did not miss a beat. You input something, it is snappy, it's responsive, it's tight. At no point do you ever think, "Oh, that fucking shitty fucking input lag or yeah, anything like not, that." It was not, tight, not as... grappled properly, or yeah. yeah, or it's that's not what. I... The only thing that I found a bit frustrating at times was the the double jump mechanic mm. before I got the infinite double jump mechanic. Yeah. Like when you're just doing a single double jump and you've yeah. got to press it at the right time, sometimes it felt a bit. A bit yeah. off, but once you get used to it, it's not such a problem. Um, yeah. yeah, so that that kind of it didn't it didn't it didn't cause me any real problems. But it's just like if I if I was being really nitpicky, mm. that would have been one of the things that I would say um, could maybe have done with a little bit of tweaking. But otherwise, like you say, in terms of the way that it played, and I loved the addition of the Emmy zones. I thought they right, were such. You like those? Interesting. I loved it. I thought that was so cool that you'd have these areas where it's proper shit yourself moments of when you get spotted, and it is a panic. It's run. Resident Evil. But it is Metroid. a panic fucking. It's run dread. The That's exit. what they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And but it it wasn't so punishing that if you got caught, it was insta death. You had two mm. opportunities to counter the enemy's attacks. I see, and yeah. I mean, it, I don't know how you found it, but after I kind of got the timing of it a little bit mm. I, I i was there and thereabouts but it's yeah i i really liked it i liked the emmy zones i thought they were a nice nice addition um to uh to add them in where it was just like literally like say like areas where it's it switches to that kind of stealth mode almost yeah they were um that was an interesting change in sort of pace i guess because you know you can freely explore most of the levels that are there you'll bump into place you can't go etc etc but these zones it was like oh i just want to get from a to b really quickly without yeah, without it being was literally caught here. open up the map and yeah. literally plot, plot an entry point and an exit point and fucking right i'm gonna leg it yeah and you get as you as you you know a metroid game you earn new powers as you go through they're they're really good but you can start to be a bit more stealthy once you've kind of unlocked this the, the invisibility, the invisibility and, and whatnot and that's handy, but it's not so powerful that you can just put it on and run through. Like you, it, the power drains quicker if you're moving, so it's one of those things. Yeah. that If the Emmy's getting close to you, best thing to do is chuck it on <coughs> and just stay still, stand still, and hope, hope it doesn't. And hope it doesn't try and trample over your head and then go. But, <laughs> yeah, but no, the um, <laughs> you kind of touched on it with the balance of the of the combat encounters, but the bosses I found great. Like it had been. Been a while really since good. I'd played a game that had a so many different types of bosses and stuff that was that was enjoyable to play, and yeah, there were moments where I was thinking, "Hmm, I'm going to struggle here," but ultimately, with a bit of perseverance, learning, that. learning the patterns, learning what works, what doesn't, you get through it, you know, with a bit of with a bit of skill and a bit of luck now and again. 
Yeah, that's it. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there. With it's it's a typical Metroidvania that you've just got to learn the attack patterns. You've got to learn the precursor to each attack to then understand what kind of manoeuvre you or what dodge you've got to do in order to not get hit. Mm. So, I mean, there's I'm sure there'll be animals out there playing it on fucking dread mode <laughs> who will who will be chasing through it. But boss yeah, rush I mean, mode coming soon. Oh man, it's it, it's great. I really like I say I've got a lot of out. I know we talked a lot of shit at the start of the podcast that there wasn't any real great games, but I, I think it's probably a bit unfair to say that this wasn't because this for me was a really was genuinely a really great little game. Mm. Yeah, it was it was a standout for sure. I, I certainly enjoyed my time with it. Was it benefiting with some sort of, I don't know, not recency bias, but bias because I'd just played through Super Metroid and caught up on the series? Probably, but even without that framework, you could dive into this and have a great time. Like, yeah, uh, did it all? Fusion did it came out in two thousand and two. No one's remembering the story from Fusion. Like ninety percent of people that play this haven't gone back to find out what happened. So no, it's crazy, on it. You didn't need it. I just found there to be. I just enjoy that sort of extra little bit of like nuggets that were, that were popping out, and I, you know, now it's what well, it's the game that's kind of made me a, a fan of the two D style Metroids. Um, you know, have, I missed most of Prime. Like I played for about six hours, and then I couldn't deal with that fucking Wii any longer. So it never got finished. So I'm so I'm hoping these remakes or remasters that have been yeah these remasters that have been rumoured are coming for Prime. But you know the future of the 2D space is in a good spot. You know with Mercury Steam doing this, it's um they can make a good Metroid game in my opinion, and I hope they 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 come Hopefully, back and yeah. visit this because let's let's see what else Samus and Co can do on the next outing. Absolutely, October twenty sixth. Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> You're shaking your head. Um, one of the... It's a 180, absolutely. But the marketing done nothing for me. The trailers about the story done nothing for me. Before the game was out, I fully expect this to be as bad, if not worse, than the Avengers game that Square Enix had published a year or so previous like there was nothing there that I thought yeah this is going to be a game worthwhile buying and playing and spending my time with and I have to tell you they absolutely completely and utterly I was wrong uh, well, maybe I wasn't wrong because the marketing I think generally everyone that looks at it went this looks like shit yeah <laughs> and that's, I think that's it's quite common but if you give it a chance this is a a great little game really Def- enjoyed my it time definitely with it struggled off the back of the avengers yeah be with that being as poor as it was yeah. because i was very much like you say i watched the the trailers and the build up and the hype for it and it looked it just nothing about it made me want to play the game no. it looked and like they, I, they didn't even look like they got the tone right like they were trying no, to be you, funny and it wasn't gonna be funny and i was like well that's that's yeah. the end of it if it can't literally if it can't day one stuff yeah, yeah if it can't get the comedy right and it's going for a comedic guardians of the galaxy approach which you kind of have to do now the movies are out yeah um then it's going to struggle but this is one of the well, it's, it's the best written thing i've played all year absolutely in terms of story in terms of character work in terms of dialogue and in terms of a a a franchise that is hugely popular now you know, Guardians of the Galaxy before the films was probably one of the most unpopular comics that Marvel had. You know, barely heard of it myself. Really? And then yeah, no, absolutely, James, absolutely, I'm right there with you. James Gunn comes along and has this really excellent kind of tone and atmosphere and, and, and comedic approach to it, and it, and everyone loves it all of a sudden. So to to try and follow that same mould and actually get close to it and take things in your own direction, this is not a copy and paste of those characters. They they have their own sort of game specific motivations and changes they've made. They've they've done such a good job here, Idos Montreal, especially under the tutelage of Square Enix, who, as we said, have questionable at best uh, the way they publish things. They're they're as up and down they're, as Capcom. Yeah, I was gonna say they are the kings of hit and miss, aren't they? Yeah. Um Yeah, so as you say, I mean this one it won best narrative, didn't it, at the uh, the game awards, mm. which I think is testament to it because with the popularity of the Marvel films being as they are at the moment, I mean, not everyone's cup of tea, certainly not mine personally, but I know a lot of people who obviously are big fans. Um, it would have been very easy, and from what we saw in the trailers, to make a fucking real pig's ear of this. Yeah. To really 
like ride a hype wave that was coming in and really make an absolute mess of it. And it sounds as though they actually pretty much hit the nail square on the head for exactly what was needed. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you ever played the Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy games. Yeah. They did. I thought they did a really good job. Yeah, at the end of 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 like keeping the 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 tone of. I mean, I can't talk about the comics because I don't know them, um, no. so I can only refer it to the films. There's no soundtrack in comics, so how are they doing that? <laughs> yeah, they did a good job of um, of keeping it sort of to the same kind of tone as the film. So yeah, it's it, uh, happy surprise to say that this was evidently better than I think most people thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's it's definitely benefited from the lowest of low expectations and then <laughs> beating beating the, that low bar but then going well beyond that um it, it it's it, it's funny you mentioned telltale actually because i forgot they did the um that that series which i did play through and this i've described this previously almost like a, a telltale game on steroids because because right, okay. of the choice element that comes into it like it follows it uses those same patterns you know dialogue trees that affect relationships between the characters on the ship outcomes of certain missions and other different sort of narrative directions um and you know the the the, the, the story remains the same let's not get silly and say oh it's like fallout new vegas where there's like eight different endings this is not this this is not that no. But the journey along that way is different for, for all sorts of different reasons, depending on what you do and don't do. And it was fascinating to see kind of like a, that, that telltale structure be imported into a game that's, you know, much more playable, much more palatable, a, a AAA game, if you will. You know, this, yeah. this looks the business. It's got a relatively on the surface complex kind of combat real time scenario set up for you to, to play through. But in, in reality, that's probably the weaker side of it. Like the combat's not the, the shining light. But you know, it's not a, it's not a point and click adventure game. This is a full fledged, fifteen hour AAA title, and they've um, they've imported those those telltale elements, the, the things that I used to love about those games. And I used to always think, oh, just imagine if they did this in like a I don't want to say a proper uh, game, but you know, a, yeah, a bigger no, budget yeah, title. It is, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, where money's been spent to to, to spruce it up. And they delivered, and, and what it ends up being in the end, you know, is is sort of like a Mass Effect light game. You know, there's mm. definitely, I definitely was was getting deja vu with Mass Effect because you return to your ship, you talk to all your teammates, you're making choices. Like, you know, you're not planet hopping, deciding to do side quests. It's a, it's more of a linear approach, but you de- it definitely gives off that vibe. And um, I wasn't expecting that. I was, I was not expecting this to be close in. As, as a game for story that I'd say, yeah, that was the best thing I played all year. And it absolutely was. It was head and shoulders above everything I played, which is which is crazy. Yeah, I'm glad that... So, I mean, I'm a big advocate of gameplay over hmm. story, like, or over a narrative. I always have... I, I, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I love Destiny, because I feel like the, the gameplay on Destiny is, is better than any other first-person shooter about. Um, but... It, arguably, I mean, a lot of people don't like it because the lore and the story behind it, or as much as Dave will try and convince you otherwise, is fucking horseshit. What are you talking about? And, <laughs> Best narrative of 2022 yeah. so far, Witch Queen. That's it. Um, so uh, it's nice to see this that's a game that puts that narrative first. And I know that others have done similar things. Like you could argue that, you know, God of War and Spider-Man and, you know, all the other big names, The Last of Us, these big name games that people mm. are saying, oh, the storyline on them is unbelievable. But I still feel like they put a lot more into or like a lot more focus on gameplay elements to it. Mm. Whereas this really went, like you say, with the dialogue trees and with the, the decision making processes that change the way that the game develops. It's nice to see someone do that and focus on that and to be rewarded for it. That hmm. people aren't just going, well, it's unplayable. The, the combat on it's no. terrible. Yeah, and it's... You know, people people were willing to have combat that was perhaps not quite as good as other similar games in terms of third person perspective shooters or whatever. Yeah. But were hap- that played it and still enjoyed it because the narrative was so good. Yeah, and like you, it's no disgrace the gameplay, but it's it's definitely no, no. Sorry, yeah, I'm making it sound as though it was absolutely no. horrific. But. No, but it's, it is what it is. Like it's a third person shooter at the end of the day, and you you only play as Star Lord as Peter Quill, um, and you 
you know, Rocket, Gamora, Groot, and Drax, you kind of call them in to do... They're fighting on their own. They're AI control them, but you can command them to do their special abilities and whatnot. And there is some nice elements, and there's a lot of elemental effects that you're going to have to get used to. Certain enemies, you know, are, are weak to fire or whatever, and it's like, yeah. oh, I've, I'll, I'll change my you know my my guns to the, the fire element and then i'll get gamora to stun them and it's all there is you know some strategy you can use there but equally you can just brute force it by yeah. scooting around on, <laughs> on his jet boots and just pummeling the, the enemies with with bullets and that that is that is one way to do it but if you want to be efficient you know you just kind of learn what what, what when's best to stun when's best to smash people up and when's best to shoot and it'll get there so it's perfectly serviceable and um it gives a really good, well-rounded, complete package. Like if you like single-player, kind of narrative-focused third-person games, and you like Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't see how people won't enjoy this because they've done such a good job with the, the writing side of it and the, and the character work of all the, the the characters that you probably know and love by this point, and and tell their own story. So, absolutely a um, a surprise. Fair, fair decision to have it on the list, though. Absolutely. Final game. For the nominees, December the 8th. Although it did come out in beta before this. They don't know, oh, it's out. But, late doors. But it was a late doors entry. It was a year late, really, because we were due to get this in 2020 at the launch of the series um, consoles. But Halo Infinite. So this is kind of in two parts because we've got a free to play multiplayer component, which is separate to the rest of the game. And then you've got a campaign element. I've played the campaign. It's. I would. I would stop short of saying that it's um, a return to form, but it's in. The, it's in the right direction. You know, the the, the, well. the gameplay enhancements alone make it a far more enjoyable game. The open-ish world elements make sure that that sandbox is approachable, and it just can't, becomes unstuck in some certain areas in the way that they kind of pace their way through it and how they structure some of the main missions. But generally, um. This is this is better than four and five again, low bars. And yeah, but, I was going to say that. But sets a nice foundation for future games. I hope they can build on this and they don't bollock it up. Um, so from the campaign perspective, um, a, a return ish to form. We, we're getting there. And, and then look, I don't know how you even get back to Halo Three and Halo Two. And how, how do you even get back the there? The first trilogy. Yeah, We've had this with Gears. Good. It's like it doesn't matter how good Gears is from now on. It will never. Because the nostalgia never of those re- never going to rekindle the magic no. that we had in the first three. No, so I don't know what I'm expecting really when I say things like that. I'm just parroting fucking bollocks, really. Like it's it's going to three for three have got their own style. They they taken the story in their own direction, and this this open kind of element to it is a um, is an enhancement. Like it plays into the strengths of the very first Halo. Like when you drop onto that Halo ring for the first time. And it's not an open world game, but it's a huge open area for you to go off and do. Yeah. Now you've got actually a world to go off and explore and other activities to kind of underpin that. So it's it's using the DNA of the first game and just expanding on what I thought made the original Halo special, especially at the time. But one of the big things about this, the huge popular multiplayer segment with free-to-play elements included, no reason to pay, just download it straight onto your PC or your Xbox... This is where your meat and potatoes sometimes reside. And from what I'm hearing, you had a great time playing some multiplayer of Halo Infinite. Yeah, I think so. Um, when it came out, we'd literally, beforehand, before the release of the, the beta and the, the online multiplayer, we had a Splitgate, which had come oh. out. And, um, you know, that was a free-to-play jobby. And a lot of people were playing it on Twitch and describing it as Halo crossed with Portal. Yes. That was kind of the 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 go to for for Splitgate that people were saying, oh yeah, it's this. And we played that a lot and I really enjoyed it. It was a good game. And then Halo came out and you realise the difference that having a major studio create a game in comparison to a smaller indie developer. Because it's just it was just so much more well polished. There was so yeah. All the little niggly things that, about Splitgate that I didn't really notice at the time necessarily playing it were just exacerbated by the fact that I was playing Halo and it just it was just better. It's just a better game. Yeah. It was You realise there are levels to these. <laughs> yeah, these exactly. Games That's sometimes. it. I mean don't, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to take away no. from Splitgate because like I say it was a it's a lot of fun, but there's a reason that no one's playing it anymore. 
Um, and I'm not saying that hundreds of people are playing Halo still, but I think I would argue that there's a lot more. I, I'm way more inclined to play Halo than I am ever going to be to play Splitgate. I thought the multiplayer was was very enjoyable. Mm. I didn't. So I haven't done any ranked on it, and I know that some of the guys have and have enjoyed it. But um, just dropping into the standard, the standard Slayer mode and whatever else, and just battling it out with randoms online, um, it's been a lot of good fun. And the big team battle yeah. session that we had when on stream, where there was I don't know, fucking eight of us, yeah. ten of us, something yeah. like that. I, it was great fun, really, really good. Just mm. like just being stupid, all burking around together in vehicles, etc. I would say that I, I, it's obviously developed for controller. Yeah, it's strange, not, isn't it? Well, it's not strange it's, given its history, but it, I started playing it on PC, mouse and keyboard, and just mm-hmm. didn't it didn't feel right. And then I heard you talking about oh, some people are saying it's a bit easy with controller, and I was like, all right. So I switched back, and then I, I played. I know, this is the ultimate sin, isn't it? Playing on PC with a controller when in a first person game is just unheard of, but. Yeah, that's I just what I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it because I prefer mouse and keyboard mm. so much now. But yeah, it was one. It was bizarre. I don't know what they did, what they'd done to the auto aim or to like the lock on mechanisms. That just it just it didn't quite ever feel right on on mouse and keyboard. And I got over it. Like I got used to it in the end. But mm. yeah, I mean, I'm again, I'm being nitpicky. I haven't obviously played the campaign, so I'm I'm kind of in a competitive environment where yeah, that little. That little tweak here and there makes a difference. It's um, yeah, it's a shame that it kind of sullied it. Just that, just took that shine off of it because I really did enjoy playing it online, and that put me off ever so slightly. And I, maybe I, w- if I hadn't have been watching other people stream it, I might not have even noticed. Yeah. But it's only when other people were mentioning and saying it's the yeah, poison in it. It's that it's poison right. seeping into your brain. You're like, oh. Yeah. I then tried it once with a controller, and I was like, fuck it, because I was wondering just how I was getting destroyed by people on controller so much, like <laughs> even playing against mates and stuff. That I was just like, what is going on? Why is why, why is, is Pete beating me? Why has Pete got a better <laughs> aim than I have? And it's because you literally watch the fucking kill cam afterwards, and he's basically just locking onto me. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but otherwise, very like again, as you say. Don't get me wrong, we're not talking about Halo 3 here, but a real return to form in that 5 was fucking dog shit <laughs> and 4 was very average. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's nice to see the franchise getting back on track. The fact that it's available day one on Game Pass worked in its favour hugely. Mm. Um, I know a lot of people aren't necessarily quite so keen on free-to-play elements of games, yeah. um, but, I mean... <laughs> They're making it accessible for people. I can't moan at it. I know the progression system's not great. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a free... End of the day, it's a free It's a free AAA title. Yeah. Although, albeit you're only getting the multiplayer, but you're getting all of the multiplayer. Yeah. So, fair fair play to, to Microsoft and, and or Xbox and 343 for doing it. Because they didn't have to. I mean, they could have just kept it, stuck it on Game Pass and gone, no, fucking buy Game Pass, you mugs. Yeah. Why, no, why I thought that's absolutely what they would do. Yeah. Like, it made sense to do that, but but no, this is, you can play this on Steam, you know, you just yep. download it and you're in. And I think the, the what stands out for me is just how well the game plays. Like, all the different skills you can use. Like, when you, I mean, I love the campaign because you've got grappling hook, grappling hook all the time. But like that's yeah. that's great just to tear around, just just to move around the world. One, it's a great <laughs> vehicle to to get around the, the the world in, but and two, it gives you a bit of a combat advantage. But that's a sought after ability in the online. Like you need to you need to be in and around when that drops to to get it. And when you do, you can do some crazy shit. You can grapple guns towards you. You can grapple people towards you, and then shotgun. There's loads of different strategies just off that one ability alone. And um, just the moment yeah, really to moment gameplay fun. was. Was, they've done a really good job especially like I loved big team battle that was always my favourite going back to the early Halos but this was this felt like the, the, the Halo of old just jumping into that and it's carnage I know it's not the best competitive environment for those that are sort of uber competitive but for the sacks of shit that just, we are just jump in just and have fun. fun yeah yeah, just good silly fun where we just all went on like you say just burked about getting the I've vehicles roaring around in the warthog you just yeah like, but you well, got like 25 gun. kills about time when i drove you around yeah the map yeah, yeah. it's great i was having a whale of a time 
But yeah, no, it's nice to get that element back to it. And like you say, I mean, big team battles not to everyone's taste, but and I don't think I'd play it on my own. But when we were in a big group, it was it was great. It was really really good fun. Yeah, agreed. Well, that's all the the six nominees for 2021. It takes two: Resident Evil Village, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Metroid Dread, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Halo Infinite. I wanted to take just a quick couple of minute break. We're not, we're not going to sit here and say nothing, but I mean, just to change the <laughs> just to, just to change. Yeah, we're just going to do a live break for you guys. You can yeah. you can fast forward this if you want. Dust ourselves down. That's yeah. It, yeah, and then we'll we'll be back shortly. No, just to have a little bit of a, a, a chat about some of the personal bits and pieces in there. Um, so I I came up with sort of two made up awards. I always do best game not released in the year. So this is a game that was either a beta or a older game that I'd played mm-hmm. the previous year. Um, this actually had a lot of competition. Like I said, because I've been catching up on backlogs. Yeah. I was I was playing, actually, well, a lot of good... hours. And, well, <laughs> I was playing a lot of good games that I had either shunned or, or not got round to. And usually yeah. I'll get through, like, one or two older games. Like That's that's kind of the usual way to do it. But no, um, I was was up against it and i think ultimately it it was monster hunter world iceborne yeah. uh, that was the best game i played that didn't come out in 2021 i was a little bit upset that monster hunter rise was a switch only for a year and then still only came to pc i was a bit like what why are you doing Cappers, that? Yeah. what are you doing again what are you doing things like that for now because yeah, Monster Hunter World got a load of people into the guys. It, it was the most successful really game drew people in. <laughs> for yeah. for a long time. So then, just to say, right, that's only on Switch now, which has a huge install base. But again, we've talked about the technical shortcomings, um, running at thirty frames and all that stuff. And I was like, oh. and then by the time it came out on PC, I was like, yeah, I can't be bothered now. I'll just wait until they either do a new release of it and it's on all the platforms. Mm. Um, or it, it comes to console maybe, but Iceborne was the was the number one choice though because I spent ninety odd hours into that Monster Hunter world. Like that was that's the first Monster Hunter game I've ever played, and it really got its hooks in early on in, in twenty twenty one. So that was a that was definitely a, a a great game to work through, and also an honourable mention to Final Fantasy fifteen because that okay. that definitely. Um, was something that I'd been mean to do, mean to do. And when we got the PS5, it came with the PlayStation Plus collection. So there's like a dozen games that are on there if you've got PlayStation Plus and you've got a PS5. And that was one of the games. It was the Royal Edition. I thought absolutely zero. Get me involved. Yeah, get me involved. And if I was going to round it out to a three, I'll drop Final Fantasy VII Remake because I really enjoyed that as well. A strong yeah. Final Fantasy year for me. Um, I was, I was... I was at an advantage because I played the integrated kind of PS5 patched up version. Um, mm-hmm. But that's a, again, that's another franchise like Metroid that I'd kind of been hovering about from afar, never really took the plunge. And now I'm like, well, give me more Final Fantasy. Where's, yeah. where's, where's Final Fantasy 16? Square. What are you doing? Ab- Ablon's fall, isn't it? Well, can they be trusted? Coming Plat- in to ruin everything. Well, platinum can't be trusted these days. No, they cannot. Want scale bound back, Phil? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Buy us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, why is Square Publishing? Anyway, Square all strange. We've been through that. And then my, <laughs> my other favourite award is the one that got away. So this is the game, the game that I wanted I wanted to play and didn't play for whatever reason. Oh, I didn't. Metroid. Sorry, Metro Exodus as well. I could have made a top six of games that weren't out last year that I've played that I enjoyed. But <laughs> Metro Exodus just popped into my head. That was... Duh. Again, that's another oh, series. Yeah. I can't wait for the next one if they, if they do another one. Anyway, one that got away. This is a very singular game. It is Returnal. So that's another okay. PS5 exclusive, Housemark. Um, was somewhat concerned about the difficulty that kept coming up with this game it's a it's kind of like a rogue like game in terms of like you die you restart the run but the main thing that put me off playing it was that you at the time of release and they have addressed this and added like a a, a, a not a fix a new feature so that you can do this but you couldn't save a run mid game 
sorry, they save the game mid run. So I say I think it's yeah. like five biomes you've got to get through in like one go, basically. And if you, it can take a few hours. So if you wanted to, if you only had an hour, for example, you mean getting there. The only way to do it was, was be to put the PS5 in rest mode and hope that A, you came doesn't, back it and doesn't it, close it down. It hasn't yeah. closed it, or you didn't have a power cut. Um and I was like, you know what, that's just not very practical for me. I mean, it is. Most no. of the time, I'll sit there and play enough. But I was like, just out of principle, I want to have that option. Anyway, they've added in a save state, basically mid-run. So that, that's kind of gone, that one. So I would like to try and play that in the next kind of year or so, 18 months. Not that that slipped too far away. But it's a tough game, so I'm going to have to be on my toes for that. Um, what about yourself? Any any call-outs or random topics? I mean, I know you'd goaded paper on the whatsapp privately to me about a special award just for him but any other thoughts they stand or... though those points stand and i'm going to mention them because people will I, I don't think people will be particularly disappointed that these two games weren't on our list but mm. people were harping on about um these two as being huge releases and so the first first of these two is valheim mm-hmm. which um we all played. You did, uh, yes. Uh, you for a while. It. Yeah, I mean, I, well, we, we commit to that and we played it for a bit. Um, as a little, it was like an indie game, wasn't it, again, that was just like relatively out of nowhere, that was like a survival yeah. Viking sandbox style game with a few bosses, etc. Yes. Yeah. Um, and again, it was one of these ones that captured people on, on Twitch and etc, etc. And a lot of people were raving about it. And I can honestly say I played it, I just... Never got it. It's just not my cup of tea at all. Like even normally games like that, if you're playing in a group, I can find are are palatable. Mm. But that was just, I just yeah. And I know James is going to be oh, it's a great game. No, it wasn't James. It was shit. Um, <laughs> this is the award. Games paper will claim were good, are good, but, but are actually dog shit. So yeah. Val, Valheim's number one. Val, and- Valheim was the first, and yeah. then the second one, understandably, is fucking Bezos's ex- adventure into into fucking MMOs again, which is um, New World, <laughs> which is I haven't played. Don't get me wrong, no. I haven't played, but mm. I've listened to people who have tried to play it whinge about it sufficiently yep. that I'm confident in saying it's not a good game that the queues are too long the game is just fundamentally broken the play like oh, it had nearly a million concurrent viewers couldn't get in the fucking couldn't, game couldn't, for two weeks players. yeah well that's because fucking 900k of them were in a fucking queue <laughs> no, no I was sitting there absolutely ridiculous I remember you guys would literally be messaging at like fucking 9 o'clock in the morning saying oh what you fancy playing tonight and it'd be like yeah, okay no worries we'll get in the queue yeah. and it's just <laughs> serious people were queuing for like 12 hours james is wandering around reporting people for being afk <laughs> these poor fucks who have fucking queued for queued for fucking eight nine hours and james is going around with his little fucking clipboard going oh wow this person's been stood still this person's running into a tree i'm going to report them it's like wake up you fucking massive cunt such a shit game it fucking annoyed me it annoys me that it's even been considered to be close to a game of the year when mm. you look at the other games that we've had on the list in comparison to those two <laughs> i just don't understand how people can put them in the same breath as as half the games that we've got on the list even half the stuff that came out last year it's just uh, yeah. oh, diabol- absolutely diabolical no i mean i i enjoyed my time with valheim for sure um but was in a beta state like it definitely wasn't it's not a finished game no it's not it wasn't and what was there was kind of in- interesting but before we before what was even there we came to its conclusion we we packed it in so that kind of goes yeah. to show that it, it didn't hold us that long we spent a lot of hours i spent a good 40 50 hours in that game um so it definitely had its time games but, like that just struggle because they're not minecraft yeah there is there is like, always it's, it's just hard it. because like the 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 building in it was just janky yeah. and just not and just not quite polished enough yeah it's stuff like that that they're always going to struggle and i know it's not the same as minecraft but there are a lot of comparisons that can be drawn and yeah, yeah I, I i felt like it struggled it yeah. was just yeah i agree with that. new world also played and kind of are still playing but again 
We haven't finished the main quest of that because it's a fucking chore. So, because yeah, it's a slog, it is and none slog, of you yeah. want to go on to play it. No, Dave's... you do it because you've started it, so you've got to finish it. I like to just finish the main quest on that, and then I'll happily just leave that. But I, you know, to say that I was enjoying the last few sessions would be a lie. Like I'm purely just doing it out of stubbornness <laughs> to get it done now. And it's like it's it, papers on there as well. We're streaming. We're fucking about you know people in the chat or whatever. But yeah, again, not a. Wouldn't say a classic, uh, New no, World. It's and... hard. It's very hard to hold those in the same kind of esteem as the get. Like I say, the six, and I know it wasn't a particularly strong game for uh, strong year for games, but to even have those in the same kind of breath as some of the other stuff, it really feels a bit unfair. Yeah, agreed. And that's what Paper tried to do, but there's a. Well, he always does, <laughs> and I get that he's got to put forward games that he's played, but there's a reason we ignore you every year. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get one one year. He will one year. There'll be something surely that just play a good game. Just play. A, how bad is your gaming experience? That this is and the worst part is the worst part is for James. He's playing them at like twenty frames per second. <laughs> he's playing New World and it's. Said, oh, I'll stick some more RAM in the computer. That won't help. That won't help. Ooh. Yep. Yep. It hurts me. So anyway, that's the... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, that, that was my additional award. Yeah, the games that don't deserve to be near this list. Yes, absolutely. Games that people claim were good or are good, but are actually dog shit. Valheim and New World, as per Hall's um, <laughs> display there. Let's get back to it. We're going to crown a winner out of the six that we had spoken about earlier. So we've got ourselves It Takes Two, Resident Evil Village, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Metroid Dread, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Halo infinite um you know i'm gonna let you announce the winner since this was definitely one that you were you were kind of fighting for along with a few others as well it was actually close between this and, and one other game in terms of like who we thought should take the title overall but mr hall do you want to reveal dimp digital's game of the year for 2021 so the title for this year goes to Metroid Dread. Not Valheim. Which I, no. Which I think is... Uh, I mean, obviously, like you say, I batted for this pretty mm. pretty fervently. So I am very much in the belief that this was the best game that last year had to offer. Um, obviously, there was some close competition between that and uh, Resident Evil Village. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like, personally, that's not the, the game I was going to bat for, but that's what the that's what the choice I kind of was left with because I was in between. It was it was a deadlock between Metroid Dread and Resident, Resident Evil Village. Village, and for me, they weren't really that close. Village was was good, um, but I felt like Metroid was a, a far better, more consistent package. So I kind of had to. Yeah, I don't I'm like being in that position where I make the choice, but that's that's how the cookie crumbled <laughs> this year. I'm kind of surprised that, um, and maybe it was just lack of people that played them. But I honestly thought it takes two was going to do, yeah. um, was going to have more of an argument put forward for it. Um, I was never really, I didn't think halo or, or gardens of the galaxy really stood much of a chance. No. Um, ratchet and clank maybe. Um, but people seemed to be more on the negative side towards ratchet. And we actually had the conversation that it was almost like it was being punished for having been played by people. It was, it was absolutely was. It yeah, is. because people were people had an opinion on that rather than just the blanket. Oh, I don't know, I haven't played that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I felt for that, and I, I'm surprised that more. I mean, obviously, I didn't play, um, didn't play certain games, but stuff like um, Deathloop, I thought was going to appear on. That was obviously one that was that was very well critically acclaimed. That I thought was going to appear on yeah. our list, or that someone might have gone into bat for. Yeah, Psychonauts um, Two. I was well Psychonauts again. I was, two was I was the only one, one who played it, so it's down to me really. And um... it's hard when you're the only one batting for a game to warrant, unless it's really, really is top notch. It's difficult to bat for something. Yeah, and that's that was the problem. It was it it, it, was, it was good, good, but... but to say top notch, I think I, I I wouldn't agree with that. So yeah, there was certainly stuff that that missed out and was, was close to. Um, and yeah, Deathloop was was another one. Um, we had a lot of people that started Deathloop and actually didn't finish it. And I was kind of yeah. like, uh, if that's well, happening, that's a bit of a, a telling come tale. On. Come don't, on, boys! Don't just be sheep and follow what IGN is saying. Going, oh, ten out of ten. Like you boys have all sat down and tried to play that and binned it. 
Yeah, that's pretty telling, isn't it? All yeah. things considered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, like I say, aside from if Metroid, let's take away aside the fact that the the Nintendo Switch is a handheld console, and it was if if it was just a, a standard console like the others, would this still be on the list? I think so. Yeah, I honestly think so. You've obviously played it purely in... Uh, the reason that I like the Switch is because I can play it in handheld mode. Mm. So I play it on the train. I play it when I get some downtime at work. I can play it in bed. Um, I get neck ache. No one's solved that for me yet. Yeah, I just... I, I don't get that. I don't know why people... Have I don't even have a problem. neck, really, either. Look, I'm one of those people yeah, that's got a, not hardly a neck, and yet... Take, taken up purely by beard nowadays. Well... Um, but yeah, so I think that's another testament to it that the fact that you can play it in handheld mode just gives it that extra layer of playability that you know you don't get from a lot of games the switch should be commended for that i don't know we rag on it a lot because mm. it's not got the power that the other consoles have but it's fundamentally a handheld console it's yeah, not it is, yeah it's not a challenger for the ps5 or the xbox series x or a pc mm. it is a handheld console and I mean, it's not even... It's the handheld console on the market at the minute. It's the it's the best buy a long way. We've all got one, and we all play ours. Mm -hmm. So there's something that, that's going right with it, and I think that certainly... I, I'd be surprised if anyone played Metroid and really went, oh, I can't... Uh, uh, I dislike this game intensely. Mm -hmm. Other than maybe Biff, because he's shit at games. <laughs> Just... Got to get the dicks in while I can, because I ain't going to get them in the fantasy gaming league this year. So, <laughs> well, you might do. I've got, dig, so, I've got to dig people out where I can. It's a long way to go. No, I mean, I, I would agree with most of that. I think Metroid Dread really was a was the, was the standout for me. Um, mm. I really liked it. Take, it takes two, but you know, given the would that have, was that the other one that you? That's the you only other one I would have put even. Yeah, like if it was a battle between it takes two and Metroid Dread, I may have maybe I would have had a different opinion but that that felt like the closest thing to it but you know the fact that it's co-op as well makes it difficult for people like you've got to, you have, that has to be factored into to playability you can't just sit down and play it takes two metro dread you can just pop that on and it will look great in handheld mode and it'll look yeah. it'll look good on the tv as like a, a modern kind of 2d it's not a platformer but you know it will look like a modern 2d game so i am um, i i, I back metro dread to to win it and you know, it just it it definitely benefits because it's a genre that's it, it's done so often these these Metroid and Metroidvania games that most indie games that's what they are, aren't they? They're always trying to capture that, but it just shows that sometimes just having the the, the right IP and the, the the original and a, a team round it like Mercury Steam who kind of who know this 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 IP and this this genre inside out. Um, can produce great results, and I feel like they've they've done that with Metroid Dread. Um, when it's all said and yeah. done, look back, and that's that's definitely the more one of the more memorable games that I played. So, sure, it's uh, in my opinion earns its spot. Worthy winner, worthy winner. Metroid Dread, game of the year twenty twenty one, and we've got five other nominees, which are it takes two, Resident mm -hmm. Evil Village, Ratchet and Clank, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Halo Infinite. That's it. Done there it. You go. We'll get it's hauled, a wrap. We'll get hauled back in another year. My once a year podcast. When he's allowed. Or maybe the quiz. Yeah. Try and win that back. Well, it should get easier now that those stupid children are getting a bit bigger. It might be a bit easier. <laughs> but um, <laughs> costly at the minute. Not to be trusted. But uh, no, they aren't. This was, this was Idle Game Chat bonus stage. So you'll be getting this outside the normal Monday cycle. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back on Monday for the normal episode of Idle Game Chat. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed or our YouTube channel. However you decide to consume it, you can find us on those channels and hit the subscribe and we'll be there every Monday morning for you. But nothing more for us to say here, though, other than thanks for your time and ta-da.
This was a Dimp Digital production.